Hey there, how you doing? Charlie Winters here with horse racing tips for Saturday the 14th of September. Well, disappointing day on Friday. Absolute garbage, to be honest. Blinky ran well. Um, Maharaja's, it ran how I thought it was going to, but I thought it would pick up a bit better than that. It, it ran flat, really. Uh, the first one, Queen Street v Review, um, I was expecting it to force the pace. Um, it came out last. So that was very disappointing. Um, yeah, so a disappointing day in as a whole. Um, so let's get on to Saturday. Try and be a, bit more, a little bit more positive. So um, I'm going to talk you through the bet. So the football bet will be, it'll pop up in the right-hand corner because it's already been placed and I selected it and posted a video yesterday. So if you look to the top right-hand corner of this video or I'll leave a link in the description and the first comment for the football bet. I've left it with chat GPT again. Uh, but I've asked it slightly different questions. Oh, well, only very slightly. Um, yeah, so let me get into the horse racing, or the free horse racing tips for Saturday. So it's 10 pence each way, lucky 15. And as you can see, I've left the prices. So the first selection is Bergerac in the 225 at Doncaster in the Portland Handicap, paying seven places instead of four. I find this horse very interesting. It ran an absolute cracker at York last time. And you know when we was going with the low numbers for the draw bias, low to slightly middle, and we actually had JM Jungle. Well, this ran, JM Jungle as a winner, this ran in that race. And it was this horse was drawn 19, and it did the best of um, the high-drawn horses. Also coming out with distinction that day was... Um, I think it's called Vintage Clarets, trained by Richard Farhi, that is also in this race today. So I was looking to split them, and I think the interesting thing, problem is, when, whenever I, I give a danger, it's not the danger that runs the better of the two, but Vintage Clarets is ridden by Jamie Spencer and is a hold performer. So that's an interesting horse, but I'm going for Bergerac because it's got an okay draw. It's drawn 14, but I do believe they'll come straight down the middle pretty much. Um... And, yeah, it, I think it must have lost at least three lengths in that race. And it was only beaten half a length by what is the favourite in this race, which is Chagran. So it's quite interesting there. So, yeah, I do like the look of Bergerac, and that's the reasoning behind that selection. The next selection is the Thames Boatman in the 235 at Lingfield. A very good all-weather performer. Um, it's run well at Lingfield in the past. Um, it's run very well at uh, Chelmsford. And its most recent run at Chelmsford was a win when I tipped it that day. But also, it beat a horse called Star of Lady M. Well, that horse has gone on to do two fantastic runs since. It won very well at York. Probably got slightly favoured by the draw, but also but actually ran very well anyway. Showed loads of pace and uh, won well that day. So I think the Thames Boatman against some horses um, that... I won't say question marks for the other weather, all weather but on all weather regular performers... And also, cover point that I fancied at, I think it was at York. If it wasn't York, it was Doncaster anyway. That is in that race, but I, I can't have it because it, it's its first run on the all-weather. The next, third selection is Zoffy in the 240 at Chester, paying five places instead of three. This horse, it loves Chester. He is trained by Hugo Palmer, so you can pretty much... Um, Expect it to be trained, especially for races at either Haydock or Chester. Um, I think it's got a very good chance on form. Um, it should be prominent throughout. And there are a lot of question marks over a lot of the other horses. This horse has recently been not running that well, but I think it's because of being, because of being, it's been because of the quicker ground it's been running on. And the final selection in this bet is a very progressive horse called Al Shabab Storm in the three o'clock at Doncaster paying four places instead of three. Progressing very quickly. I think it's it's shown um, progressive racing post ratings in every single run this season. Apart from last time, I think it was a little bit disappointing. Um, it's got every chance, in my opinion, and I think it's roughly about 13 to two. Um, I think it's got a very good chance. So I've had some singles there. So I had a 10p each way, lucky 15, and 25 pence each way singles. I'm going to run out of battery soon. <laughs> Another 10 pence each way, lucky 15. So once again, it's Zoffy. It was 15 to 2 in the 240 at Chester, paying five places instead of three. The second selection is also at Chester. It's TJ 
at 13 to 2 in the 320 at Chester. Nick Bradley, the <coughs> the racing syndicate manager, has actually got two in this race. They've got the more fancied runner, but they've also got this horse that's being turned out very quickly again. This one was also on the near side at Doncaster last time. It was unfavoured by it, it showed a lot of pace, but I think it, it could be suited by Chester. And I'm very interested in the, in the quick reappearance, given, given the, or granted, the disappointing run at York. The third selection is Aryan Power at 16 to 1 in the t in the quarter past four race at Doncaster, paying four places instead of three. This selection, trained by Michael Stout, announces retirement. Well, this um, what well, is it, is an is retirement at the end of the season. This horse has got patches of form that can give it a chance, and I think there's too much going on as in like the Michael Stout retirement. They could the the, um, the media couldn't wait to jump all over that possibly on Saturday, interviewing the trainer or I can't imagine the trainer being at Doncaster but interviewing the connections and making a big thing about Michael Stout retiring. So it wouldn't surprise me if this horse ran well. Sixteen to one is too big a price anyway. Even if you take the fairy tale out of it. And the final selection in this bet is Bo Pedro because I can't ignore this horse. It's fourteen to one. In the 25 past 5 race at Doncaster, paying four places instead of three. This horse is ridiculously well handicapped. It's just, a, it's just a case of when they want it to win. Well, I backed it a few times now. A couple of times it's come placed, but also it's come unplaced. Well, they're running, around to, they're running out of options now. The flat season is coming to a close soon. And I'm just thinking, um, when? <laughs> Because it, it, it's actually running okay. Sometimes it's been drawn poorly. And sometimes it's not really had the run of the race. But if it gets a quick pace, this horse has got every chance. David O'Meara is probably coming up to a good part of his time in the season where he likes these um, big northern meetings, like when the season's coming to a close. Uh, the, he likes the St. Ledger meeting, the November handicap, um, those kind of meetings. So I think this has got a cracking chance. Um, and I've also had... I've had a free bet, so they they can see the singles again. I'm not really tipping this free bet because it was just a free bet. I've just literally gone through and picked three uh, five selections because I needed five for the bet. So it's Liverpool at one to five to win, Brighton at two to five to win, Crystal Palace at four to seven to win, Man City at one to six to win, and Sunderland at four to six to win. I've only gone for these. I would not normally have this bet. I've only gone for this bet. Purely because they gave me five pound. I think it was a, a completely free five pound free bet. Um, it actually makes twenty pound, which is not a bad return. Even that is, that's even with the five pound free bet deducted. So yeah, some very short odds on there, and a, a, not a bad little return. The football bet it's a seven pound over two and a half goals bet, and a seven uh, and a three pound over two over. Th yeah, okay then. It's a seven pound over two and a half goals treble. And a three pound over three and a half goals treble. As you, the selections will be in the link to the description of this video, and also in the top right hand corner, and also be in the video, uh, the last video that is just about to come up at the end of this video. So if you can give me a like or a subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Charlie Winters, over and out. Cheers, mate.